So this episode is going to be a little bit different than our norm. The rest of the team is back at the sandbox at Aqualand doing the second and third set of classes for the Aquascape Academy. In the meantime, instead of jumping into how we're building this project, I'm actually going to do something a little bit different. Let's get rolling. going on DK Team Aquascape coming at you. I'm out here in San Diego on a collaboration build with Ed the Pond Professor, Kevin from Epic Gardening and Epic Homesteading, and Sandra Bendrick. This build is a nice little pond with a 3,000 gallon rain harvesting system. Instead of jumping into how we're building this project, giving you the ins and outs, that's already going to be on Ed's channel. So definitely check this actual build process out. There's a lot of great knowledge in there. I'm actually going to do something a little little bit different. Throughout the comments this season, we've heard from a lot of you guys saying that you want some of the tips and tricks and hacks of what Team Aquascape does throughout our build process. So I'm going to be bringing about a dozen or so of those to you. And throughout this season, I'm also going to get with Jack, Chris, and Brian, and we're going to try to bring you a series of tips and tricks on our tool setup, equipment, and how we kind of pick that, our mindset behind it, just kind of deep dive into that. So it'll be a little bit of a different process going into this winter season. In the meantime, let's get rolling. things that's super imperative on our projects is trying to keep the surrounding work area kind of leveled off so that it makes accessibility with both the machines, the wheelbarrows, our crew to be able to get in and out without having uh, molehills and stuff to fight with the wheelbarrows. You know, so throughout the projects you're constantly kind of having to go in and knock some windrows down, level things out. And although it may take a minute or two, I'm kind of doing it in unison with picking rocks or grabbing material or repositioning. You can see where Jose has been coming in with the skid steer and turning. I keep having to go back every once in a while and just kind of knock that down and give him a smooth road. It just makes everything more efficient and run smoother. So what Ed's doing here is he's piecing in some fabric. We're using the Makita material cutter. This thing has been an absolute game changer for our crew and Ed this year. You can slice these fabric pieces like butter. The biggest thing, Ed, we were just talking about this yesterday, the safety aspect of yep. using this tool. Yeah, the, I think one of the things that I see a lot is contractors are using razor knives and you're cutting through this heavy fabric and got folds and stuff like that. So you're cutting and if it slips, People are gashing their hands, going in for stitches with something like this. You literally, you, like, I can't even get my finger inside of there. Like, it's not, it's not gonna fit. So this is nice and safe, keeps everything clean. Also does a better job. So comes down to efficiency and safety. It's a win. You can't put a price tag to that. Cannot. As you can see, we use that gravel down in uh, our lower shelves, even our upper shelves. In the upper, we're able to use a lot of the dirt backfill back behind the liner to get everything nice and tight. But when we dig the actual shape of the different shelves, we don't always have the boulders to fit that completely without pulling the liner back, digging in. So what we do with that is we use the gravel back behind the boulder work. One of the slick ways, like we just showed you, the wheelbarrow five gallon bucket method. You can quickly fill a wheelbarrow and then a two man team can take that gravel, dump it into those buckets, and then you can kind of chain gang you know, backfilling or have the five gallon buckets ready to go. So as you can see too, you know, Ed goes in and sets some of the mid-sized cobbles in certain joints where you know that gravel will migrate out so we try to fit each puzzle piece in there to help hold and retain that gravel back and it gives it a nice uh, aesthetic to the pond as well breaks up that boulder work from big to small and gives that nice variation so 
So what Joe's doing right there is he scribed that log to fit around the face of this boulder so it snugs up nice, gives a nice sight line, and that allows us to just give that extra 10% of detail versus just laying that log in there, leaving a big gap. This way, it just gives it that nice finish look. So when you get into the mid-size, the bigger projects, you know, your equipment is key in making you super efficient uh, and profitable on your projects. So the Skid Steer Mini X combination is a huge game changer. It allows you to shuffle material in, feed the excavator and boulder setter material to keep everything running smooth so that you're not having to chase things out to the street with a ball cart. We're able to bring the stuff right back to our staging area allows our crew to strap things up, get them ready to go. And one of the things that I showed Jose, instead of spinning circles in the skits here, do that three point turn as you're seeing. Just keeps it easier for him to maneuver, less tear up, and keeps the job running smooth. So one of the other important tools, especially for starting out, most contractors already have their prize pickup truck, but a nice combination of the pickup is adding a nice dump trailer. Uh, it's very versatile. It allows you to haul material, haul equipment. We have a dump trailer and it comes in super handy for us, especially on our maintenance team when they're doing little specialty projects or cleanups. So this tool is fairly affordable in comparison to going out and spending fifty dollars to $90,000 on a dump truck. You can pick up one of these fairly reasonable and it can be a huge asset to all of your projects. So one of the things we utilize are these lifting straps on every single job. We've got both the one inch straps on the one ply end of it, which is what Joe's using right now. And then we also have these two ply ones uh, that are a little bit heavier for some of the bigger boulders we use. But the nice thing over the one inch versus the two inch is they're very easy to maneuver around the boulders and less likely to snag and uh, are easier to get off the boulder once we set them. So right now, Joe's working on strapping this one up so that we can hook it up to the excavator here and set it in over on our negative edge. So as you can see, Joe's coming across the back of the bucket. He's gonna loop it around that outside tooth and back to that center so that it does not catch over here on that cutting edge, which could cut your strap and ruin your investment. But because I've got to go a little further out in the pond, this gives me a little bit more reach. One thing you got to watch is your length of your strap. As you can see, Joe's kind of kicking the rock to make sure everything's holding good. The last thing you want is for that boulder to come undone from that strap. job site is a happy, happy job site. Therefore, a good set of uh, garbage bags or a good fruit uh, Rubbermaid style garbage can is a key tool for us on any Team Aquascape project. Just allows us to keep everything cleaned up. As you can see, scraps and stuff are laying around. So that stuff gets picked up and put right there in the trash bag. So as you guys have seen on many, many of our Team Aquascape logs, one of the key components to making our jobs run smooth are these awesome super sacks. You can get them in all different sizes. Normally the ones we have are about a ton and a half. They'll hold a little over 3,000 uh, pounds of material. Some of the ones we had on this project were actually smaller ones uh, that were a thousand pounds. But you can get them where they're just solid sacks or like this one, it's got the bottom chute in it that you can uh, untie 
and then tie back up so you're not cutting uh, the material of the bag and you're able to reuse it mul uh, multiple, multiple times uh, over and over. So we just wrapped up. I'm actually getting ready to jump in an Uber, head to the airport. But uh, I hope this has been a very beneficial help to all you guys out there. If you guys have any questions, put them down in the comments. Happy to answer. Reach out to us on the team page, both on Facebook and Instagram. Until then, we'll see you on the next one.